Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are excited to be here tonight. Hallelujah. God is on the throne. <sighs> the devil is still bald here and alive. <laughs> and he bald here because he's been here for so long. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> <My> Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, like mm. and share, saints. Like and share, like and share. It's a great day to be alive, saints of God. Great day to be alive and loving on Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. We know you could be doing a lot of other things with your time, so we definitely don't take your presence for granted. But come on and like and share. Tell them New Wine Christian Center <laughs> is on the air. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Call a neighbor, call a friend. We're going to continue our exploration <laughs> into the book of Revelations. Of course, we are at the halfway point <clears throat> of the book of Revelation. And Man. I'm telling you, it's been nothing less than phenomenal. Mm. The, the information, the insight has been just, it's phenomenal on one hand and frightening on the other. Yes, yes. Come on, like and share. We don't want you to miss one moment of this. Amen. We're excited that God has blessed us again to be here on another Wednesday night. Amen. We are overwhelmed at what God is doing in this hour. Um, and we really, really appreciate you guys for turning, tuning in every week. Amen. It's been over a year. Wow. We has. started this um, during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And I believe it was all God. I believe it was God. Amen. We started an identity crisis teaching that went on mm. for a long time. And then we've been in eschatology. And we've been in eschatology for a minute now. Mm -hmm. yep. Amen. And we've been through Daniel, Matthew. We've been through Luke. We've been through Corinthians. We've been through Ezekiel. And it's been Thessalonians. It's Thessalonians. And it's been something else. We have been so excited. We've learned so much. Yes, yes. And that's what I'm excited about, learning the Word of God. And this Re book of Revelation is the only book that says, if you read me, you're going to be blessed. <laughs> None of the other wow. books in the Bible talked about that. They said, if you read Revelation, you're going to be blessed. <laughs> And I promise you, we've been blessed. That should encourage you to read it just on that merit. I'm telling you. And you know what I believe? I believe that the devil is mad as a Chinese rattlesnake. Mm. And he's mad because a lot of um, churches do not explore this book. They don't. They don't. You know, and uh, why you wouldn't explore this book when the books say, if you read me, I'm, you're going to be blessed. But see, I never even heard that before. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so many churches... Do not study this book. That means there are a lot of Christians, mm. a lot of church people walking around unaware of this information. Totally in the dark. And this is what we live for. Wow. Amen. And I've just been so excited about it. And um, we have now got into the middle of the book where we're starting to experience <clears throat> the 70th week, the seven-year tribulation period. We've been studying the first three and a half years by which has been nothing pretty. Mm. But let me reassure you and, and let me please help you understand how in this part of the study you should be rejoicing because we're going to be in heaven before the throne room of God while all of this is going on. Mm. Amen. Mm. These seven seals, the seven trumpets, the seven bowls that are being broken, people of God, we will not be here in the earth experiencing this glory amen that's and good news all that's by good itself. news all by itself mm. and if you have a, a a bible teacher that may be a theologian that's telling you that we are post-trib they are so in error mm. all you got to do is study what we've been studying it just tune into our teachings mm -hmm. we leave them online so you can go back to the very beginning of this teaching about eschatology and follow it every week is there exciting and you will learn and discover there's no way we can be post-trib hmm. 
There's no way we can be mid-trib. Come on. Hmm. Amen. We pre-tribulation. Hmm. Jesus is going to come back to get us. We're going to be caught up to meet him in the air. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and we will be witnessing this from before the throne of God. Hmm. And we're so excited. Oh, we've been studying. So what we do get excited about as Christians, especially Revelations 2, 3, and 4, are really, really phenomenal. Because mm -hmm. they talk about the church and the posture of the church and the things that God was pleased with and the things that he wasn't pleased with. Now, that's what you should focus on. And that's what we should capitalize on, even as pastors, as apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, as saints of God. We should be sure... We are not found in those disappointing areas mm. of those churches, you know. Mm -hmm. I think the only church that got a good report was Philadelphia mm -hmm. and Smyrna. And Smyrna, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that means that you left five churches with five problems. Ooh. Hey, and I, I hate to say it, but you can be found in one of those five. Mm. And so it, it's a very good thing to re-examine them even look at these classes again and let's correct those problems to be sure we're in alignment with the scripture yes amen and i'm excited about this teaching i, I promise you sometimes when i'm doing my workouts because i work out every week sometimes when i'm doing my workouts um i go back and listen to the classes and it's just intriguing you know, it's, it's strange to learn from myself. <laughs> but it's amazing to be the Holy Ghost be teaching. Yes. And it'd be amazing how you can learn all over again as you listen to it again. So please revisit these classes. Mm -hmm. um, we study hard. And we study hard because we want to rightly divide the word of truth. Yes. Okay. And then we have an open platform, which I also enjoy where you can ask questions mm -hmm. and you can respond and we can have dialogue. And I, I just love that part of the class. <laughs> so like and share, like and share. I see the numbers going up. Mm. I see the numbers going up. Come on, like and share. Amen. Prophetess Sheila Brundage. Hey, Prophetess Sheila Brundage is in the house. Welcome, woman of God. We love you. Happy birthday, woman of God. Happy birthday, girl. We're not going to tell your age and all of that <laughs> stuff. Amen. But happy birthday. Happy Amen. Happy birthday. Powerful, powerful woman of God. Pastor of Prophetic Worship Center in yes. Pensacola, Florida. Yes. We were just there last week, mm -hmm. and God really moved. Yes. We had a time. Yeah, I'll tell you the truth. Did. We had a time. We love it. She's a part of the Centers of Great Commission. Yes. And we're excited. And we were excited this past Sunday to have Prophet Levi Washington yes. visit us here at New yes. Wine. And he we and spent the Eagle Eye. Him and the Eagle Eye Prophet, his wife. <laughs> Amen. Sister Joyce Washington. And we had a glorious day with them all day Sunday. Yes, yes. And it was such a glorious surprise when they came. <laughs> and, of course, he's over St. Luke Baptist Church. Baptist. In Jacksonville, Florida. Amen. He's also a member of the Centers of the Great Commission. Yes. That is our covering ministry of the churches that I cover. And we're so excited. We got Bishop Moses Mason mm -hmm. in Tennessee. Yeah. We got Apostle Tony Hill mm -hmm. in Villa Rica. Villa Rica. <laughs> and Villa Rica. <laughs> Amen. We're praying for you, Apostle Hill. We love your renewing of the minds, church. Mm -hmm. Yeah powerful church and then we got a church in uh, uh Lithonia, Georgia. Uh, uh wow. I'm trying to think of New Birth. There we go. Okay. New Birth in Lithonia, Georgia. <laughs> Amen. And the pastors are so powerful. We yes, love that church. Yes. It's about time for us to go back out there and and, it's time. and have a little sit down. Yeah. Amen. They've been a member of CGC for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Amen. And God has really blessed the Centers of the Great Commission to have these churches that we cover and we're excited about them. And then there's so many ministries mm -hmm. that are in the uh, Centers of the Great Commission. Prophet Julia Williams and mm -hmm. Prophet Aisha Griffith, Aisha, um, uh, Aisha got married. What's Aisha last new name? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just call her Prophet Aisha. <laughs> she is so powerful. Yes. She ministered for us on Sunday. And Lord have mercy. You can just feel the power yes. when she ministered. Prophetess Rochelle and mm -hmm. Prophetess Kia Powell and Prophetess Chastity Bradford. Prophetess Chastity Bradford. Oh my star. She is absolutely powerful. Evangelist mm -hmm. Ronaldo Norman, Evangelist mm -hmm. Marvin. 
the list goes on. We have so many ministries that are part of the Centers of the Great Commission, you know, and it's getting to be so many. I had to get me a list and write the name <laughs> down. It's, getting to be, <laughs> it's got to be 20, maybe 25 that are part of the Centers of the Great Commission, a powerful, powerful move of God. And, you know, I'm excited that God used us to build such a phenomenal army. Yeah. Of saints. Yes. And Atlanta is in trouble. <laughs> I'm telling you now, Atlanta, Georgia is in trouble. Mm. Okay. Mm. And while we're waiting for you all to like and share, we see the numbers coming up. We're excited. We are in a conference next week. Amen. Mm -hmm. At our mother church, which is in Valdosta, Georgia, Apostle Kathy Kitchens. Uh, Pentecostal House of Prayer. The conference is going to be held at Valdosta State University. Yes. Amen. Yes. I meant to tell my uh, administrator to have that flyer that we could post it online so you can get the information. But it's going to start on Wednesday, mm -hmm. July 7th, mm -hmm. and it will go to July 11th, which is that Sunday. And it's going to be absolutely powerful i'm so excited about it but the flyer is up on the new wine uh, website so you can go there and amen so if you go to the new wine website the flyer is there i know i will be preaching on friday night mm -hmm. uh my my dear friend prophet joseph queest will be uh pr preaching on wednesday night mm -hmm. i love him so much that's yes. my dear friend yes. prophet joseph queef is off the chain and then one of my fathers in the spirit who I love so much, Apostle Billy Wonders. Billy Wonders. Billy Wonders. <laughs> <laughs> he will be preaching on Thursday night, mm -hmm. and we're so excited. And then during the day, we got workshops, and yes. I know I'll be doing a prophetic seminar on Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's at 1130, if I'm not mistaken, or at 9 o'clock. Yes, it's at 1130 mm -hmm. on Thursday. You don't want to miss that. I got a word for that. A particular prophetic seminar and it's a combination of things we'll be ministering in the prophetic but we also be teaching mm -hmm. and I'm in a space in my life now where I don't like to just flow in the gifts I want to be sure you know what it is mm. I want to be sure you know what it's about why yeah. we're doing it so that prophetic seminar is very very awesome and we're just excited I know we got a we got uh, Raphael's wife, Camoso Kinchins. I know she's mm -hmm. preaching, uh, I think, one of the morning glories. Yes. And when I tell you that's a revelating preaching <laughs> machine, I can't wait to hear her. Yes. I yes. can't wait to hear her. She of was course, awesome last oh, year. Oh, she was awesome last year. And, of course, we hope Mama have words to say. I'm sure she will mm -hmm. preach one of these services because she's so phenomenal. Yes. It's just unbelievable. And we are overwhelmed at what God's going to do in this conference is going to be powerful. Mm -hmm. So if you're anywhere near Valdosta, Georgia, if you're in Florida, Alabama, anywhere near Valdosta, join us there. It's going to be absolutely powerful. And I believe God's going to do tremendous, tremendous things in that conference. Mm -hmm. Come on, like and share. Amen. How was your day? My day was good. Amen. Good. Was Georgia's good. getting back to itself. Unfortunately. It was scorching today. <laughs> It had to be in the 90s today. It yep. was absolutely scorching. But I tell you the truth, I love Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. I was born and raised in Chicago with polar bears, icicles, <laughs> snowstorms, blizzards, and that whole thing. And I thank God that he rescued me. Yes, I am oh, too, Oh, God, I thank God he rescued me. Mm. Amen. And to my family that's still there, I am praying for you on a continuous basis. <laughs> Amen. My Auntie Olivia, who I talked to yes. yesterday, yes. she's like my mama, really. And then my cousin Twinkie, Evander Twinkie, she's there. I'm Twink. praying for you guys. And I'm excited because my niece graduated this weekend yes. with her Medical MD. Yes. Yeah, she, yes. she has a now official MD. She is now Dr. Yes. Adrian, Dr. Dr. Cobb. Dr. Cobb, amen. <laughs> so I'm excited that my family is blessed. My family are blessed. I think she's the first doctor mm. in, in, our, in our generation. I think she's the first doctor mm. and we're so excited about it. It's my sister's daughter and we're excited. And my sister, she's watching. Uh, Sheila, I love you so much. And I love all the new wine family. It is exciting. Why are you still liking and sharing? Before we get into this message, I see the numbers coming up. Want to do, want to make an announcement. And I told the staff in the meeting last night I would make this announcement. 
That being July 18th, mark it on your calendar, July 18th. New Wine Christian Center will be opening back up. Amen. Now, we have been open during the COVID, but we divide the church into four parts because we wanted to do the social distancing and, the, and be safe from COVID. And thank God we had no cases in the church Amen. during that whole season. It, that's how we know it was God. But as July 18th, we will be coming back together. Now, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to keep it at two groups. We had broke it down into four groups, but we're going to bring it back into two groups. That way, everybody will be able to come to church every Sunday. Mm. And we are so excited about it. We've also created a system where we have enough room for visitors when they come because we always have visitors come. Yes. Amen. So we are so excited. So Matt, mark it on your calendar. July 18th, New Wine Christian Center will be back up live and kicking amen. amen and we're excited about that come on like and share like and share and sister sylvia holmes we want to say happy anniversary oh she said it's her 14th anniversary oh hallelujah congratulations oh girl you anointed 14 years you still married girl you anointed <laughs> you anointed it's god amen marriage amen. is wonderful it's honorable in the eyes of god we celebrate you. That's a great achievement. Amen. Amen. Sister Jasmine, congratulations on the new job. Yay. We had just talked about that. Hmm. I forgot what holiday we spent with her a couple of weeks ago. Uh, four, and we, 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 we oh, were just talking about it. Mm -hmm. And boom, it came to pass. Yes. And we're so excited. Isn't God moving? He is. I'll he tell is. you what excites me more than anything. When I see the saints of God prosper. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I am not a preacher. I got a problem, people. And I know a lot of preachers ain't going to get me with me on this, but that's okay. That's why I'm me and you, you. Amen. And you keep being you and I'm going to be me. Amen. I have a problem with pastors who excel and prosper uh, over the top. Hmm. But the people yes. struggle. Yeah. yeah. I got a problem with that. I, th I think something's wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I think something's wrong with that. If you, if the gospel you preaching, it's the same gospel you living by. Come on. Then they should see what you see. Hmm. If you prosper, they should prosper. Mm -hmm. Now I know you can come up with all kinds of excuses. Well, they got to do what we do. Well, they do. <laughs> well, they need to do this and do that. No, no, no. Look, if you're a pastor and you're not concerned come on. when your people don't prosper. That part. Come on now. I need you to come out of denial. Hmm. Let's go a little deeper. I need you to do research. Hmm. Like a new wine is obvious. We don't have to do digging and research because it'd be obvious. Yes. You know, we get testimonies every week mm -hmm. of God moving. Okay, it's obvious. But if it's not obvious in your church, you need to do some research. Maybe mm -hmm. you need to communicate with your people and say, was God blessing you? Mm -hmm. You know, are you healthy? Mm -hmm. Are you strong? How are your family doing? Yeah. How are your kids? Anybody graduating from college? Mm -hmm. You know, you need to communicate. And if you're not seeing the prosperity on your people that's on you, there is a problem. There is a problem. There is a problem. Mm. It reminds me of the story that was awesome to me when I studied it, when Queen Sheba went to see Solomon because mm -hmm. she had heard about his splendor. But in her journey, what she found the most phenomenal was the people prosper. Hmm. And the people were happy and the people were blessed and the people moved in excellence. And she was blown away with that. She said, yeah, it's true about Solomon. His wisdom is explicit. It's awesome. But his people hmm. and people of God, I'm telling you, I'm talking to all my pastors out there. Look, if your people are not prospering and you are, there is a problem. Mm -hmm. Come out of denial Come out of whatever la-la land you're in. Come out of what deep, whatever deep, sea sowing prosperity, <laughs> uh, helicopter you flying on. Oh my. You need to land mm. and you need to pray. Hmm. Because the same prosperity you're experiencing, your people should experience it as well. And if they not, I'm going to talk to your people. Hmm. Your people need to question. Ah. 
is there a problem? Yeah. Come on now, because there be serving, is a problem. Supposed to be serving the same God, so. Okay, talk about a problem. He has no respect to a person. Come on so now. What's up? What's up with that? You know, that bothers me, hmm. you know, and you can come up with all kind of excuses. But again, I say, if you live in by the same gospel you preach mm -hmm. and they live in by it, too, they should see the same results that you see. Absolutely. Come on now. Absolutely. And I'm going to take it even deeper. Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm trying not to go here, but I'm going to get into the message. But I'm telling I'm going to take it a little deeper. If they are, quote unquote, sowing seed mm. in the ministry and not seeing benefits from that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's another problem mm -hmm. that ain't the first problem that's the second problem the first problem is if they pay a tithe and offering in your church come on come on now then the there. bible don't lie mm -hmm. huh mm -hmm. so if they're not prospering if the windows of heaven are not opening up come on now if the devourer is not being devoured mm -hmm. for their sake mm -hmm. then that means there's something wrong in the house that's blocking the word from doing what it do. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, this uh, ain't my message tonight. Mm. But I guess since I'm getting ready to go on the conference mm. land, I might as well get warmed up and oh, get crunk with it. Because like I'm tired of seeing poor folks Ooh. in your church and you got a brand new Mercedes. Come on. Hello. You got you got $500 glasses. Mm. Come on now. You you wearing the finest traveling all over the planet mm. and your people struggling. Come on. Something wrong. Can't even take a trip to Disneyland. Come on. Something wrong. And mm. that, that's a problem. And mm. I'm coming. Oh, I'm coming. Okay. I'm going to bring it because I'm not. The, look, the Bible said, you know, a man by his fruit. That's the book. So if your church still full of hormones, that's a problem. Mm -mm. If your people poor, that's a problem mm -hmm. because the man or the woman of the house, that's your fruit. Mm -hmm. Now, how is it that your fruit flowing like that, but you, you living in the Taj Mahal? Come on. Huh? You boasting about all what you get, constantly boasting mm -hmm. under the, under the auspices of, you know, I'm just talking but i'm just testifying so the people can be blessed uh, well in the court of the testimony ain't nobody blessed but you Ooh. Mm. i ain't heard nobody else testimony screaming like that people of god this is a problem mm. this is a problem and you know i'm a street preacher and when i'm in the street this is a big big concern of the people mm. how are you sowing seed and don't see nothing come back from the seed mm. come on Something wrong mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm. Amen. Mm. So let's 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 be wise here. And I'm talking to my pastor. Let's be wise here. Get concerned. Mm. Care about your people. Care yes. enough to let's pray about what's blocking the word. Mm. Wow. That's now, if it's something they doing, that's on them. Mm -hmm. But if they living right, living holy, paying their tithes and offering, planting that seed, walking up right, carrying their responsibilities, and they not seeing nothing happen from you and your church, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Hey, come on, like and share. Ooh, welcome, oh. Brother Charles Bays. We've been missing you, man. Hey, Brother God. Bays, we miss you, bro. I was hoping all is well with you. We love Amen. you so much. Amen. Amen. I'm going to leave that alone and get back in here. I see the numbers going up quick. They like when I get crunk. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> they like when I get crunk. Boy, they be tuning in like, uh oh, apostle going in. Oh. Well, you know, it's just the truth. It's just the truth. Amen. Very, Amen. very important. Hey, Apostle J.Q. Lockett is in the <laughs> house. Amen. We love Amen. the man of God. We love you so much, my brother. We miss you terribly, 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 terribly. Amen. This is so important, people of God. Come on, call a neighbor, call a friend, and let them know. We're going to give you two minutes. Like and share. Like, like and, and share. share. We're going to give you two minutes before we dive into the revelations chapter nine and mm. we're going to start dealing with the fifth trumpet mm. oh my stars mm. we start talking about those trumpets last week people of god it this is horrible if you ever heard people say that god is a terrible god they are absolutely right mm. 
Amen. When the scripture says you don't want to fall into the hands of an angry God, mm. this is why. Mm. The, 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 these seals took us somewhere. But when they start blowing the trumpets, mm -mm. when we went into the third judgments, okay, trumpet one through four, we experience what theologians call the third judgment. Well, why do they call it that? Because every judgment that happened, like for example, when the first trumpet blew, a third of the trees and the grass on the earth burned up. <laughs> mm -mm. Y'all ain't here. A third of the trees and the grass burned up on the earth. Now understand now, now we are up in the tribulation period. Mm, mm. We, we've we crossed over now. <laughs> We're crossing over into the second three and a half years of the tribulation period. We've already left the 69th week. We've already been through the first three and a half years of the tribulation period. We're starting to cross over now. And this trumpet being blown, the first one blow, it said fire just all of a sudden burnt up a third of the trees and the grass on the planet earth mm -hmm. now people of god last week we dealt a little bit about some of you had kept petitioning me about well if i miss the rapture man of god are you saying i won't be able to get saved well i was trying to have mercy on you <laughs> and not say anything oh but you kept petitioning me and i had to go and get in the book on you because mm. the book of second thessalonians chapter two starts talking about you know those that i had the opportunity to get saved and chose not to get saved. In other words, you refuse to love the truth. Come on. The scripture said at that juncture that God will send a spirit of strong delusion yes, upon says. your life that you will believe a lie mm. instead of believing the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, if I, I, I'm a little confused now, but God is reassuring me every day because I think the spirit of strong delusion operating now. With some of these Trumpites. You know, come I don't on, mind calling on, names. I call you what it is. Because some of y'all seem to be under strong delusion that he not wicked. Hmm. He absolutely wicked. And it's the only joke I've seen work skillfully to divide a nation. Yes, yes. Simply because you believe you have enough white power to win votes. Come on. And then you suppress the people of color hoping that enough people of color won't vote. Mm-hmm. And enough whites will vote. Well, you the devil. Hmm. And your daddy, Mr. Trump, is the devil. Come on now. Come on. So I was asking God, has the spirit of strong delusion already been loosed in the earth? Hmm. And hmm. he said, well, no, son, you're not in the tribulation period oh, yet. Oh, God. So we can get worse than what it is now? Uh, okay. In Second Thessalonians Jeez. chapter 2, because you refuse to love the truth, he going to release a spirit of strong delusion on you that you believe a lie. What does that mean? You miss the rapture. You go over into the tribulation period. When the Antichrist start talking, you're going to believe every lie that come wow. out of his mouth. My God. If ever this was a preview wow. that we've experienced in the last four years, mm -hmm. this was a preview mm -hmm. that you believe in QAnon? where pastors have to spend time in their church to convince the people that true QAnon is not real? My God. Looked at me like strong delusion already operating. Mm. You believe in lies. Mm. Mm. Okay? So why take the risk of missing the rapture when you're getting the truth right here on New Wine Christian Center Bible Study? Mm. We're giving you the bald head truth. Bald -head. And we're trying to help you love the truth so you can get saved yes. and get filled with the Holy Spirit. That way you ain't got to worry about missing the rapture. Mm. Hallelujah. Ooh. We don't want you to miss the rapture. Because if you miss it, you might end up in tribulation period believing a lie. Mm. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the first thirds of this trumpet, we saw the trees and the grass totally burned up. And then the second trumpet blew. And then we saw the seas. This is what was really scary. It said that the seas, the water systems, a third of the water on the earth turned into blood. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> Not only did a third of the water turn to blood. Now, you got to remember, you got the Indian Ocean. You got the Pacific Ocean. You got the Atlantic Ocean. That's about a third of the water. Maybe, maybe the Pacific and the Indian Ocean alone is a third of the water. Hmm. Okay, think about all of that turning to blood. 
Guess what else happened? When that trumpet blew and the water turned to blood, all of the animals in that bloody water died. People, this is a horrible thing. Not only that, ships that are carrying merchandise for people were destroyed. But think about how, think about a ship in bloody water. Fish dying all around you. Come on. It's got to be stinking. Yeah. It has to be. And then if you understand how ships work, they'll pull in water and keep the engines cool. Hmm. Huh? Well, if you pull it in blood, ain't no keeping no engines cool right there. If you get stuck out in a bloody ocean, then guess what? The ship gets destroyed and the people on board die. Hmm. And it was a third of the seas. That's why we call it the judgment of the thirds. And then we had another terrible thing happen. In that third trumpet, when it blew, there was a there was a star came down called a wormwood star. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it landed and it dropped in the water. And a third of the water, we're not talking about the third of the bloody water, a third of the other water that's left, this wormwood produced bitterness in that water. In other words, it was poison. Now, this was wicked because not only did more sea animals die, fish, you know, uh, all kind of ant whales, sharks, penguins, they died from the bitter water. But it also said that this bitter water got into the systems of man mm. and men started dying from drinking the water. So that tells you that this wormwood that got in the water the water still looked clear as if it was okay. Mm. They got it out of their faucet. They started creating bottled water, and people started drinking it and dying all over the place. This happened with the second trumpet. This happened with the third trumpet. But the fourth trumpet is where it really got spooky. Because when the fourth trumpet blew, it said that the sun, the moon, and the stars darkened. A third of the sun, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars stop producing light. What does that mean, people? That means that at nighttime, when we got light from the moon, we got light from the stars. Think about it. A third of that time now would be total pitch black. Third of the stars darken. Third of the sun darken. People, this was horrible. This was the fourth trumpet that blowed. Now, it was something amazing that happened at the end of the eighth chapter. Let me read that for you before we go into this ninth chapter and deal with this fifth trumpet. Because this was an interesting point. This was an interesting, interesting point. After this fourth trumpet, when a third of the sun, third of the moon, third of the stars were darkened, it said that there was an angel that flew across the sky. I dug into this angel and I found something interesting. This particular type of angel uh, was related more to an eagle. Uh, Why they chose this, I don't know, but he was related more to an eagle. But what was amazing, he started talking as he was flying across the earth. Let's read that. In 813, this is now right after the fourth trumpet. Mm -hmm. Okay, Revelations 8 and 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. This This is amazing because This angel was flying, warning the earth of three more trumpets that got to blow. Hmm. Now, the the first four we saw were devastating. Trees, grass, burnt up, fish dead, blood in the water, bitterness in the water, sun, moon, and stars, darkening. This was horrible enough, but this particular angel flew through the air, warning the earth that there were three more horns that have not yet blown. Mm. Now watch what's awesome that I found out in my study. The angel said with a loud voice, whoa, comma, whoa, 
comma. Whoa, comma. So I said, well, God, why he say whoa three times? Mm -hmm. Couldn't he just did one big whoa and, and gone about his business? And he said, each whoa represented a trumpet. Mm. So when he did the whoa three times, that meant that there were three more trumpets of disaster that were coming. Each woe represented a trumpet. Now, what I found about that was awesome. So I said, so, so does that mean that whenever we hear of your angels saying something, that they're being very specific every time they say something? Hmm. Okay, and I never would have even addressed this in my studies, in my prayer, I would have never addressed this. But when that came to me, I was like, wow. So he wasn't just saying, whoa, 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 mm. just to be saying it. Mm -hmm. It meant there was a whoa connected to every trumpet of disaster that was going to be blown. And so I did a little bit of digging. I did a little more digging. And guess what I found out in Isaiah 6? I found out something. Mm. When the angel, the cherubims, fly over the head of God. Mm -hmm. And they be saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb of God. Guess what I found out? I found out that each time they said holy, every time I read that, they said holy three times. Mm -hmm. For the Father, for the Son, mm -hmm. and for the Holy Ghost. They were very specific in what they do. So from now on in your studies, you want to, let's pay attention to that. But what was awesome about this is how the angel warned them of these next three trumpets that were about to blow. So let's go over into nine. Revelation nine and one. And let's start to deal with this fifth trumpet. And I don't know, we're probably going to just do five and six because there's a, there's a four chapter pause in between six and seven trumpet. Mm. So you notice, I told you in the earlier teaching that there are seven instances, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls. But really at the end of six, before you go into the seven, there's always a pause. We notice it with the seals. And that, in that pause, the seventh chapter, we noticed, we learned about the 144,000 Jews that were going to be great evangelists with a seal of God in their head. Hmm. Here we are now, at, going, we're going to be at the end of this sixth trumpet, there's going to be another pause, a three-chapter pause hmm. in between six and seven. So let's explore five and six, and I'm sure that's going to be quiet enough tonight because it's quite horrible. Hmm. May I add? So let's start at Revelation 9 and 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now, as I studied this, I, I had a question. My question was, how is it that a star could be called him? Mm -hmm. And that made me dig into this because we have not known stars to even um, be able to carry keys that were given to them. Mm -hmm. So that made me dig. And when I dug, I found out that a star can be a star, which is an enormous bright light on fire in, in heaven. Or it could be an angel. It can be a person, which is why it was called him. And we've heard this in the Bible, the bright in the morning star, uh -huh. okay, which related to a, a spirit or a person, okay? And then we found out that this person, from my research, I'm going to be maybe 70% sure that this star was the devil. Hmm. Hmm. And watch what, what, what blew me away about this. It said the fifth angel blew the trumpet. I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth. That could be relating again to the devil when he got kicked out of heaven. Okay, I'd have to go into I have to go into Kairos to even express that, but it may be a repeat of how he got kicked out. Oh wow. <laughs> so <laughs> I saw the star fall from heaven onto the earth. And semi and it's a semicolon there. It's a colon there, which means you got to pause. Look what it says. Read, and. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. 
underline in your Bible for me. To him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And I'm taking my time and dealing with that because I want to clear something up with, with you all. That the devil don't own nothing. Hmm. And sometimes I've heard teachers teach this. I've even seen movies about eschatology that were, that were to me, had segments of misinterpreted scripture. Hmm. Now, if they were intentionally misinterpreting or if they were trying to create a little bit of a Hollywood in the movie for it to sell, I don't know which one it was, but I'm thinking if you're going to depict Bible stories, you need to stick to the book because hmm. you might get in trouble for twisting stuff like that. Mm. Real talk. Yeah. But I want to clear something up because here it says, I saw the star fall from heaven onto the earth. If you fail, that means you was pushed. Oh, okay. I didn't see you fly from heaven and land on your feet. Mm. <laughs> it said, I saw you fall Ooh. from heaven onto the earth. Sound like the story when Satan got kicked out to me. Mm. Okay. And then it said, and to him was what? Given, Given. a key to the where? Bottomless that pit. That mean he didn't own ownership of the bottomless pit. Whoa. And that means he didn't even have a key to get in the bottomless mm. pit. Mm. And that means he didn't make the bottomless pit. And that means that you all that think that Satan right now is in the bottomless pit making chambers for you, preparing hell for you to fall into oh, because God. you rejected God is 100% error. Mm. Mm. Because, according to my research biblically, Satan is homeless. Because <laughs> his home was in heaven. Wow. He got evicted. He got kicked out onto an earth that he didn't even make. Mm. Come on. And here now, we got this trumpet blown. He fall out of heaven again. And then it said to him, was given a key to the bottomless pit. Lord, I wish y'all would read your Bible. Yeah. Mm. The devil ain't got no juice. He homeless. He mad. He hate us. He jealous of human beings, the truth be told. He jealous. Bottom line. But you know what? He jealous enough to destroy you. And if I don't talk this way to you about him, then you won't see my point. And my point is the only way the devil can get a hold of your life and demons get in you is if you lack knowledge about who the devil is. Mm -mm. He's a prince of the power of the air, but he homeless. That wasn't his original abode. <laughs> Come on here. Yeah. It said he was given a key of the bottomless pit. Read. And he opened the bottomless pit, uh -huh. and there arose a smoke out of the pit. Did not Jesus die on the cross? And when he went to hell, did he not snatch the keys of life and death and hell from Satan? Y'all don't read your Bible. Did he not snatch a key from him? Mm. Come on. And I'm only letting you borrow them now because I need you to do something for me. <laughs> Huh? I don't feel like going in that heat infested area. Mm. So I need you to do this. He got the keys. I need you to go down there and do this. Read two, it says. And he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Now, people of God, uh, one issue I have with theologians is they make the book of revelations super complicated mm. super impossible for you to ever fathom what's really going on people of god if you look revelations are not difficult if you take it for what it's saying hmm. word upon word line upon line precept upon precept if you just read what it's saying and stop trying to create some super duper right now modern theory about what they're saying it's plain. It's simple. He got a key 
to the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It's a pit, and it don't have a bottom. It's simple. (laughs) It also says, out of the pit arose smoke. Then that means only way you get smoke is there fire. Hey. (laughs) (laughs) And most of the time, you get smoke when something is on fire. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Because if you light a cigarette lighter and that flame is flaming, do you see smoke? Mm -hmm. No. (laughs) You don't see smoke until something is on fire. (laughs) (laughs) So he opened up the bottomless pit, come on, and then rolled out of the pit smoke. And as the smoke of a what? Great. Furnace. That means a furnace got fire and it's a furnace to burn up stuff. Mm. Mm. And the sun in the air were what? Darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Let's keep this clear. They, the sun was darkened and the air was darkened because of the smoke. Mm. Mm. And I'm emphasizing that so you don't create something that's not there. Mm-hmm. Now, this is when it get creepy. Read. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power. It says that there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. It's a colon there. They want you to think about that. Mm. Locusts. In my research, people, these locusts wasn't like the ones we know. (laughs) These boogers right here were nothing like the locusts we know of right now. Mm. Matter of fact, we got locusts flying around right now. Mm -hmm. They're nothing like that. Oh, God. Read this book. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth okay. had power. Did it say, did it say that the fallen star gave them power? No. And why do I keep pointing that out? Because I don't want you to think the devil got more juice than what he got. Mm. First of all, he was given the key. And then second of all, when these locusts came up out of that pit, They were given power, Mm. not by the star. Read this book. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Let's let's go back now. It said they came smoke, locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given what? Power. Uh Uh-huh. As the scorpions of the earth have power. As the scorpions of the earth have power. Now, if anybody had any dealing with scorpion, you already know that's not what you want to be dealing with because they have a poisonous tail Mm -hmm. that can take you up out of here. Especially if they bite you and you don't get a serum right away. Mm -hmm. It can take you out. Mm -hmm. And they're not the biggest creatures. Right. You know, you would think with all that punch they pack and they'd be big. They're small. Mm -hmm. You can can walk over them. Mm -hmm. It said they were given power at the scorpions of the earth have power. Now it's giving us a point in relation to let us know what kind of power these locusts had. Mm. This is amazing. Read. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Oh, uh, there's been enough damage to a third of the grass already. It's been burnt up. Read. Neither any green thing. The trees, a third of them have already been burnt up. That's not y'all's job. Read. Neither any tree. Ha, here we go. But only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. People of God, I don't know about you, but I was studying this. I went right into prayer. I said, Lord, I want to be sure I got your what? seal on my head. Hey. Huh. I want to be absolutely sure I got mm. the seal of God on my head. Oh. Read this. It said, don't kill nobody that's got the seal of God on their head. Mm. Now watch what's important here. And we're going to be moving, but I want to point this out because we've been teaching along the way. And a lot of people keep asking, what's the function of the Holy Ghost? Will the Holy Ghost be in the earth? Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. and my explanation of that is the Holy Ghost will be in the earth, but his role will change. Wow. He won't be the infield people with his spirit. And he won't be in a position to protect people from hurt, harm, and danger. Hmm. Now his role changes. Why do I say that? Because now man has to have a seal of God in his head as opposed to the Holy Ghost protection. Hmm. Hmm. So the Holy Ghost role has changed now. Wow. This is very important to see. So these locusts are on assignment. Anybody 
that don't have the seal of God in their head. Oh, Lord. So for you that want to skip the rapture <laughs> and look for a chance to get saved <laughs> in the tribulation period. Oh, God. Well, uh, these cats going to be looking for you. Come on. <laughs> and when I say these some cats, we not even fenders explaining them. These uh -oh. some cats that's going to be looking for you. Uh -oh. Read this book, it says. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. Wait a minute. They're given power like scorpions, meaning they can sting you and kill you. But they were under commandment. That means they got control of how they can release their blow. Hmm. That means they can hit you with a blow that not kill you, yeah. but mess you up for five whole months. Torment. You'll be tormented yeah. for five. Are y'all reading the same mm. Bible I'm reading? Mm -mm 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 -mm. These locusts Jeez. with a scorpion's touch that they've been powered with will sting you and it will torture you for five months. And of course, oh you know, I had, you know, I had to dig on that. I had to dig into that. Because, you know, five is the number of grace. I said, but this don't look like grace at all to me. <laughs> guess what it is? It's not grace. It's judgment. Because oh. guess what the last five-month judgment was? What? Noah's Ark. Oh. Noah's Ark, that storm came for five months, 150 days. Mm. I researched it. Mm. That mean that that was judgment on the earth for five months. Wow. And everything that was alive Come died. On. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. That's judgment. And here we got the same scenario. These cats going to sting you. You'll be tormented for five months. Read this book. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Read the book. And in those days shall men seek death. Okay, but this this hurt me right here. This 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 took me somewhere, saints. Read it again, it says. And in those days shall men seek death. Come on. And shall not find it. You gonna look to die My and God. death gonna run from you. Mm. Because their five month curse on you will cause death to run from you. My God. And this what you want to skip the rapture for? Mm. And they shall not be able to find death. And it seemed like Ooh. that means that y'all y'all didn't catch that. Ooh. Ooh. That means I could take a gun, hold it to my head, and fire it, and no death way. ain't gonna find me. My God. I just be walking around with a hole in my head and a more pain along with the locust pain. Because mm. death will not find you. Wow. Ooh. wow. Read this book. And shall desire to die. Come on. And death shall flee from them. You will desire to die and death will run oh, from you. Oh, my, my. Are y'all reading this Bible? That's, oh. Mm-mm. Verse 7 going to really take you to another level. Because these not these little locusts y'all talking about. Uh-uh. Read verse 7. Look what it says. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses. Now, people, don't get deep. It did not say the locusts were like horses. <laughs> it didn't say the locusts were horses. Because I saw somebody draw a picture, tried to draw a picture of this, and they had a horse. It didn't say that. It said the shapes of the locusts mm -hmm. were like horses prepared to battle. Don't add to the scripture. Mm. Take it face value what it is. Mm -hmm. So they were locusts looking like little horses. Read this book. And on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold. Okay, did it say that they had crowns of gold on their head, people? Because <laughs> when I saw this picture, I saw a horse. And I saw a, a man with a, a crown of gold on his head. It didn't say that. It said on their heads were as it yes, were yes, crowns. Yes, yes. Like gold. Hmm. Which means they had some little tentacle thingies on their head. Hmm. Read this book. And their faces were as the faces of men. Okay, this is getting creepy, people. This is getting creepy. Wow. This is going to get more creepy. Read verse 8. And they had hair... As the hair of women. Okay, not the hair of men. 
They had long hair, mm. like my wife. Mm. They had long hair. Okay, you got a, 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 a horse-looking locust with a man's face mm. Mm. and a woman's hair and stinging like a scorpion. Jesus. Read this book. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Now, don't you ever call nobody else ugly for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> because this is a description <laughs> of ugly Ooh. and deadly. Mm. All at the same time. Read this book. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running into battle. You can't even shoot these things. This is, this is horrible. Read. And they had tails like unto scorpions. And, they, and there were stings in their tails. And their power was to hurt men five months. Read the book. And they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abd Abdon. Abaddon. Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Now, this again, people, tell you that the devil don't own Jack. Hmm. He got a key into the bottomless pit. But watch this. He let these locusts out, but they had a king. Who was the king? The king over the bottomless pit, whose name was Abaddon. That wasn't Satan. Oh, that was another whole yeah, spirit. Yeah. Okay. Please write it down. Mm. Because I've heard people uh, read this and, and misinterpret the exegesis was off. Mm. It was off because it says that this, this Apollyon is not Satan. When you look up Abaddon and look up Apollyon, it, it means uh, uh, the, the spirit of destruction. Mm. That's not Satan's forte. That's not what Satan do. It's a destroying spirit, Abaddon. And he's the king over the bottomless pit. He's a destroying spirit, the destroyer. Mm. Y'all getting quiet on me. He couldn't be the king over the bottomless pit unless God made him the king over the bottomless pit. Because the Bible says when you study it, that heaven, that hell wasn't made for man. Hell was made for Satan and his crew that got kicked out. Mm -hmm. Hello? Now, if he made a hell for you to be uh, captive to, then he could possibly make you the king over the hell you're going to be captive to. <laughs> yeah. Do I got any Bible readers on, out here? Yeah, Come on yeah, now. Yeah, Come yeah. on. You, you, you get try to get so deep mm. and create some type deep theory, and it's right here in your face. Mm. Satan, the star, had to get a key to open the bottomless pit. Watch this. Obviously, these locusts with men's face, women hair, horse bodies, and obviously. Lion's teeth. And lion's teeth. Obviously, they've been there waiting for this moment. Oh, God. Watch this. They in a furnace that's on fire with smoke. Mm. Think about that. Eee. Think about that. People of God, then that means the king of the bottomless pit is preparing uh. Satan's final move. Can I go deeper? Satan going to be bound in this particular pit during the thousand year millennial period it's yeah, saying he's yeah, gonna yeah. be chained up in this pit how can you be the king of the pit and be chained up in the pit at the same time <laughs> wow apollyon is another spirit wow who was the king of the bottomless pit that ain't what satan look god didn't make a mistake lucifer was the praise and worship leader on the mountain of god mm. He can't have that assignment and be the king of the bottomless pit at the same time. That's why I say he's a homeless spirit. He homeless. The dude, the angel, that day, he homeless. He got kicked out of his crib. God didn't reassign him to the bottomless pit. God set up the bottomless pit for his destruction, for his punishment. Mm. 
Is anybody online? Ooh, we just totally missed it. Selah, think about that. These locusts are going to be treacherous. Can you imagine that? Tormented for five months, and that's where you want to be? <laughs> Let's continue to read. Verse 12. One woe is past. That's quite enough. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Read. And behold, there come two woes more hereafter. He's a terrible God. You don't want to fall ah. into the hands of an angry God. Mm. It ain't no folly out here that's it's worth, worth this. Come on here. Mm -mm. Huh? This make holiness easy. <laughs> so you're right. <laughs> You don't want to play Russian Ooh. roulette with this. Mm. Read. And the sixth angel sounded. Now, here we're going with the sixth trumpet. This is the last one we're going to do. I don't want to hold you all night, but this is the sixth trumpet. Watch this. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Now, let's touch this, people. Because we know the great river Euphrates, it, it's, it's a real river. But there's some mystical mystery to this river, too. Okay? Because we know this river was there east of the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. with Adam and Eve. Uh-huh. People of God. But we also know still that this river still run through Africa by by the Middle East. This river still kicking. Wow. Now I don't know. I don't know how many rivers have lasted that long. Hmm. This river Euphrates, we also know, look, think about it. It was there east of the Garden of Eden. But then it also talks about how the river Euphrates. Is going to be dried up for the battle of Armageddon mm. that the armies of 200 million got across the river Euphrates mm -hmm. to get into Hegidio mm -hmm. right, right, right. for the battle of Armageddon. People, mm. the same river. Mm. I just want you to think on those statistics right there. Just, I'm not trying to be deep. I just, I just want you to be knowledgeable. Up when they see something like a river Euphrates, I want you to understand this is not a normal river. Yeah. Hmm. This is not no this is not no, you know, Chattahoochee River. <laughs> <laughs> People of God, this is not a normal river. Okay? Mm. This is this is a river river. Mm. So this would really capture my attention. It does not express yet that the river Euphrates had dried up, right? Mm -hmm. But this particular angel, this sixth trumpet, was told, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. People of God, this, this took me on a study extravaganza because, first of all, why were they bound in the bottom of the Euphrates River. Mm. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, who bound them up there? Uh. And number three, why were they bound in the Euphrates River until this angel, the trumpet, could release them? Mm. Oh. Mm. Okay. And the only thing I could come up with, people of God, and I'm sure it may be some theologians out there that got other revelations, some people got other understandings, but up to this point, just the understanding that I have, and that is this. God put them there for such a time as this. They were bound there by God until their release comes from the sixth trumpet angel. And to me, 
they were in preparation for what God got them there to do. And you may say, well, what do they got to do? Let's keep reading. <laughs> oh, God. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. As I said, God put them there and they were there preparing. For this moment, when they get released in the earth to kill a third part of man. Wow. These are angels. Now, of course, my, the question now gets back to me, are these fallen angels or are these angels that are called to do this specific thing? And I would have to go to this. We know the fallen angels are in the earth under the uh, rulership of Lucifer, right? But we also know that there were another group of fallen angels that are under a curse and chained up right now mm -hmm. for mating with the daughters of men. Mm. So either they are part of the fallen angels or these angels were made for this. And you would say, well, uh, you saying that God would make angels to kill man? Um, let me, can we go back in the Bible? God even raised up man to kill man. Moses came off the top of that mountain mm. and got angry. Yes. When he threw that, them slates Stones. down, yeah, yeah. some jokers died. Mm. Huh? Hmm. When Korah and Dalton came against Moses, mm -hmm. he said, choose what side you're going to be on. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> and when he prayed, what happened? That, that earth cracked, cracked open, open. Yes. and killed up a whole bunch of folk. Y'all yeah. ain't in this book. Yeah, yeah. It, it even tells me Elijah, after the great uh, <laughs> extravaganza on the top of the mountain, and they cried for their false god to burn up the altar when it didn't happen on Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. What happened? It said Elijah killed up mm. 400 prophets. Mm, mm, mm. Well, what would make you think mm. he ain't got angels? Uh, mm. Did not he have angels come when Pharaoh was coming against the children of Israel? They went ham. Mm. My point being, these angels were designed by God. My question is, they had to have a little anxiousness about them. Because they couldn't do anything until they were loose. Mm -hmm. So it was a question of how long had they been there? Who knows, man of God? Who knows how long they've been there? Because we don't even know how long the river Euphrates has been there. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the river Euphrates was there at the Garden of Eden, there wasn't even man. Mm -hmm. wow. So who knows how long this garden? Brother Bays? <laughs> We don't know. We don't even know how long the Garden of Eden had been there. We don't really know. Mm -hmm. We come into the scene when Adam gets put in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. That's when we come in the scene. We don't know how long the Garden of Eden existed. We don't know. So we definitely don't know how long the Euphrates River had been there. And we don't know how long those angels had been under the Euphrates River preparing to kill up a third part of the men mm -hmm. in the earth after being loosed by the angel of the sixth trumpet. What a God. Wow. But this is going to get worse. Read. Oh, 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 what? And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. Now me and my wife set up and calculated this. <laughs> and that came to nine zeros of men. That means this army was an army of horsemen of 200 million, okay, Eesh. 200 million horsemen. Mm. Think about that. That's nine zeros. 200, that's, that's, 
200,000 times a thousand. That's 200 million horsemen loosed into the earth to kill a third. <laughs> Just a third. Just, uh, <laughs> oh, God. We kind of wanted to leave them bound Ooh, up in the bottom of yes, the Euphrates. Yes, 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 yes. Read. And I heard the number of them. Can you imagine that sound? Mm. Read. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. People, listen, listen. Not only do you not want to be here because of this, you don't really want to see this. Horses with lion heads, mm -mm. breastplates of fire, breathing fire out of their mouth with smoke and brimstone, 200 million. Jesus. What do you do with that? What do you do with that? Read. And these three was the third of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by, by the brimstone. By these three was mm -hmm. a third part of men killed. 200 million came with these three. Mm. Mm. And where did they come from? Where did the 200 million horsemen come from? Mm. Just because they were loosed out of the Euphrates River? You talk, and we talk about <laughs> marine spirits. Uh, got nothing on these guys. Mar got nothing on this. Read that again, A.T. By these three was the third of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. Read. For their power is in their mouth. And in their tails. Oh my goodness. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. Okay. They had tails like serpents with heads. Did you, you had to catch that part? You read the Bible exactly what it is. We mm. can't even fathom this in our head now. No. <laughs> you, you can't fathom this now because you got lion heads. Horse bodies, breastplates with fire, mm -hmm. fire and brimstone coming out of their mouth. Now it's telling us they got tails like unto serpents. And they had heads. They had heads, heads. on the tails. Mm -hmm. And with them, they do hurt folks. Mm. Oh, God. Selah. Just think about that. Hollywood can't produce this kind of movie. Mm. Read. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands. People of God. Just the sight of this should make you repent. Hmm. Just, the, just the sight of this should make you repent. But I'm going to show you something here. Read this. It says. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils oh, and idols of they, gold. They were Satan worshippers, people of God, the people left in the earth now. Let's talk about this. We in the tribulation period, second part, come on, and the people that are left now have turned, in, they are worshippers of the devil, worshippers of idols, of gold of silver, of brass, of stone, of wheel, of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. They worship in everything. Jesus. But God. <laughs> and people want to know if they missed the rapture. This, <laughs> okay, now you're working with me now. <laughs> now, now, now you're working with me now. Oh my God, my God. Are y'all hearing this? Mm. The enemy now got them so bamboozled. Mm. No. What got them going is the spirit of strong delusion. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. They worshiping the devil, idols 
of gold, silver, oh, brass, stone, wood, which they can neither see nor hear nor walk. And having witnessed and seen all of this, they don't even have a heart to repent. Okay, keep reading. They that. don't have a mind to repent. They don't even have a mind to repent, <laughs> which means which means what? Did Hollywood must have done their job? Mm. Then these then these uh, games that the kids play must have done their job. Oh, to God. where you're not scared of this kind of stuff now. Mm. So maybe you don't even believe as a God. Who else could possibly be doing these things that are being done but God? What's crazy about it, remember now, in the fifth horn, they were trying to die, and death was running away yeah, from them. Yeah, yeah, But they still didn't repent to God. They would have rather Please, die on, no, than to repent to God. Oh, my God. Mm. This is going to really get you. 21 says, Neither repented they of their murders. That mean people were murdering each other, read. Nor of their sorceries. That mean they were drug addicts and major dope dealers everywhere, read. Nor of their fornication. They were hoeing everywhere, every chance they could, read. Nor of their thefts. And was robbing folks left and right. People, that oh mean the God. world is in chaos. Another scripture calls it lawlessness. Hmm. And you got it right there. Not only were they Satan worshipers, idolaters, Jesus. but they were now murderers, which we got going on right now mm -hmm. and getting worse and worse. People, mm -hmm. that's why this is not going to get better. When I be preaching and say, well, you know, it's, things not going to get any better. Things are going to get worse because we're in the last days. People be looking at me, like, especially my prosperity preachers. You must not have read Revelation. You must be on something else. It's not going to get better. Because the, the stage right now is being set. Mm. And that's why if you don't believe in the Bible, you would believe in a Trump. <laughs> because the stage is being set, people. A nation divided cannot stand. That's why you don't see America in none of this eschatology. You don't see us because a kingdom divided cannot stand. It's the job of the Republicans to divide the nation for their greedy, selfish ambition, not understanding that they're setting America up to be destroyed and eliminated out of eschatology. Hmm. They're not getting it, man. This means the, what does it say in Matthew 24? That the love of many will wax cold. Shaba mm. roko sianda. People, this is real. And of course, let me let me just share this with you, and we're gonna close right here because we've we said enough. <laughs> but you got a lot of people that are trying to take the book of revelations and relate it to modern times. In other words, they're trying to make like they're trying to make the locust symbolic. Mm. Like the helicopters or jets or something. They trying to well look, while you trying to be symbolic and, and relate things to planes and nuclear bombs, well what are you gonna relate the bottomless pit to? <laughs> what you gonna relate Ab Abalon to? Who you gonna relate that to? What you gonna make them be? Come on, saints. The Bible is true. Take it literally. What is being said is what's going to happen. These are demon spirits that are being released out of the bottomless pit. It was clear. It said here that these are angels that are being released from the river Euphrates. These are not planes and jets and stuff you're making up in your mind. It's literally mean what it says. My mother used to quote a poem. She was an awesome prophet, but she used to quote this. She used to preach this poem that said, Sinner man, where you going to be? <laughs> when the rocks cry out, where you going to be? When the fire start falling, where you going to be? Where you going to run to? People of God, this is very, very true. My prayer, my hope, and my desire tonight is that you don't allow yourself to be tricked, bamboozled, and hoodwinked long enough to miss your opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ right now. So you don't have to be a partaker of any of this. 
You can be before the throne of God room. Where are we going to be? We're going to be before the throne of God, <laughs> worshiping him with the four beasts, with the 24 elders, with the innumerable angels, even with those that are martyrs beneath the throne of God. I, I need you to make that decision tonight. I need you to give your life to Jesus Christ tonight because this is not Hollywood. This is the Bible. This is true. <laughs> You can see things coming around into this right now. The stage is being set. And the deeper we go in the second half of Revelation, the more shaking it's going to mm. get. It's going to get shaking, especially when we deal with the great whore. When we deal with Babylon, it's going to get painfully clear. And that's why we're here, because we want to share this Bible line upon line precept upon precept. We don't want nobody to experience this. And we don't want nobody to go to hell. Mm -mm. If you if you would think that this is hell, <laughs> yes. but it's not. Because wow. that bottomless pit that was open, we don't want you falling in there. People of God, we're going to end right here. We want you to get your question together mm -hmm. that you may have pertaining to the class tonight. And also, while you're getting the question together, we also want you to plant a seed. We are still helping people. That's what we do. We don't promise you cars, houses, jets, helicopters, uh, none of that. I don't believe prophecy should be that. I don't agree with that system at all. Okay, now there have been times in prophecy when God has told me, tell a person, plant this seed, he want to unlock this. Mm -hmm. But for me to sit on here and tell you, if you plant a seed of $50 or $100, God going to do this, he going to give you that, get out of here. That's the devil. <laughs> That's misappropriation of the gifts. Okay, if God got a word for you, it's free. He gave mm -hmm. it to us free. We're going to give it to you free. Mm -hmm. We want you to plant seed because we're helping people, number one. And we're going to pray over your seed. When you send it, we don't send it right away. We sit on it. We pray on it. And then we send it to wherever it's going to go, be it Malawi, be it Botswana, be it South Africa. We send it out. Okay? That's what we do. Be it India, we send it. Okay, we're going to start pouring in the Indian because my mom now has begun to set up camp in India. And that's going to be the next move. And they already pour money in. We're going to join them. Okay, that's what we do. So if you want to plant your seed, please send your seed to Apostle G1 mm. on Cash App. Cash App, <laughs> Apostle G1. That's Cash App. Apostle G1. Come on, send in your $50, send in your $100 seeds. And while you're doing that, we're going to answer your questions. So if you got questions, type them in. We get them right now. We're going to answer if we can. We got them. Here we go. Okay. I'm reading the Bible with new spiritual eyes. And as I came across Genesis 32, 22 through 32, I became confused. You said to read the Bible as it is so. Mm -hmm. So was Jacob with God, Jacob that was with God, was he an angel or Jesus? Or was he with Jesus? I think it's a question. Was he with God, an angel, or Jesus? It says an angel, if I'm not mistaken. That's not our text, but <laughs> that's not what we're talking about. But let's go. <laughs> let's go there. Genesis 32. Uh, 22. Read. Oh, I'm sorry. 22. Okay. Mm. And he arose that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his 11 sons and passed over the four Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent them over and sent over that he had. 
And Jacob was left alone and they wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, thou hast power with God and with men and has prevailed. And Jacob asked and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of that place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. And he passed over Peniel. The sun rose upon him and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore, the children of Israel eat now at the sinew, which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. It's clear it was God. It's clear. There's there's no confusion there. It's literally what he said. It was God. And that's why he said, I have been face to face with God. Mm -hmm. And my life is preserved, which is important. It was God. You know, and we saw many times in the Old Testament where God visited people. He went to Abraham. He went to Sarah. It was God not symbolic it was God and then you have to be you have to know for him to even change his name it's God hmm. okay so don't be confused um, what what have you confused is the question I would have for you what why were you confused is that because you were told no man can see God hmm. You know, was it that you were confused because Moses was on the mountain and asked to see God's hind parts? Okay. And I know there are teachings about that. Many have said, you see God, you die. Mm -hmm. The question is, are you seeing God in a form that he makes himself presented to you? Or are we talking about God's glory? Because Moses wanted to see God in his glory. And that's not possible. Hmm. We can't handle his glory. We would probably incinerate. We would just disappear. But in the situation where Abraham and here with Jacob, he saw God as a man. That means God took on a form hmm. that a man could be presented to him. Okay? So... That that would be where I can see your confusion can be at, and hopefully we clear that up for you. You know, the thing about God and angels, they can come in any form they like. Demons can't, hmm. but angels and God can. Okay, not only not only that, the form that God came before Abraham in, not only was he in that form, but he also ate with him. Mm -hmm. Sarah cooked, and they said and ate. The angels with him set in eight. Okay? So hopefully that answers your question. Amen. Ready? And what was her name? Gina Davis. Hopefully that answers your question, Gina. Hope. Oh. Ready? Mm -hmm. For the people who love the truth and are trying to not be under the spirit of illusion, I think she means delusion yeah is that second thessalonians 2 and 13 It's Second Thessalonians nine, if you want to get into it. Nine, mm -hmm. ten, eleven, twelve. 
What chapter? Second Thessalonians 2, verses 9 through 12. Okay. That whole passage. You know, even before that, it goes into verse 7, goes to the mystery of iniquity, does already work. That's another whole teaching. Only he who now let it will let. That's the Holy Ghost. Okay? And once the Holy Ghost be taken out of the way, then the Antichrist will be able to come. Okay? So that's that's dealing with that whole transition. How will the Holy Spirit be taken out of the way? When Jesus come back and the rapture happens. Okay, so when the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way, it didn't say taken out of the earth. And that's why it clearly has been expressing to you the Holy Spirit's role will change. Okay, think about it. In first chapter of Ephesians, talk about we are sealed with the Holy Ghost, which is the earnest money of God. So the Holy Ghost becomes our protection. And it becomes our, he indwells in us. Boom. After the rapture, though, you know, the 144,000 men now get sealed with the seal of God on their head. All right. So the Holy Ghost role changed. Mm -hmm. Their protection was the seal of God on their head. Our protection was the seal of the Holy Ghost, which was the earnest money of God saying he's coming back to get us. The role of the Holy Ghost changed. He moved out of the way of the Antichrist, and the Antichrist go crazy and have free reign. Different role. Did that answer the question? I think so. What was the question again? For people who love the truth yeah. and are trying to not be under the spirit of delusion, is that found in Second Thessalonians yes. 2 and 13? Yeah, and I was just explaining to you how it leads up to that passage of scriptures, you know. So you kind of need to get that whole passage from 7 all the way down to 12. You kind of need to understand that whole thing, you know, because it's dealing with that transition between 69th week, 70th week, the rapture, tribulation period. You know, the tribulation period cannot happen until the antichrist is released that cannot happen until the holy ghost get out of the way once the holy ghost get out of the way antichrist will be released which is that first horse we talked about the first seal mm -hmm. that was released the white horse with the with the crooked crown on his head with the bow in his hand which is a fake god the antichrist he released once he released in the earth then we kick in with this particular scripture Okay, so I'm just trying to give you the whole gist of that whole segment. Next question. That's it. I said it. We give you a few more seconds for questions. You got to have more questions <laughs> with these animals we talked about tonight, which are spirits. <laughs> and don't forget that people, these are not, uh, you know, literal animals like we know: pet the dog, pet the man, pet the horse, pet the pony. No, these are spirits that have been prepared and waiting for this season. That's the scary part, which means if you don't believe in spiritual things, then you could never absorb or exegete revelations. Because, for example, those, those angels under the Euphrates, they exist right now. They're there right now as we speak unseen if you don't believe in the unseen hmm. then you 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 could never operate in the realms of the spirit i see strange demons all the time and it is it's it's nothing you know made up it's real Amen. Come on, give us a few more questions. I mean, they online too. 
they online. Come on, if you got questions, <laughs> ask your questions. So good to see you, Sierra. Savannah, so good to see you guys. I'll give you a few moments. Because you know what happens all the time. We go offline, yes. and then the questions start coming in yes. like crazy. So yeah. I'm just stalling. I don't want that to happen. This is phenomenal. <laughs> like nothing I ever fathomed. Wow. Wow. Okay, we got another question. Okay. How does all of these things happen before God send people to hell? How do they happen? They happen. To me, the ultimate plan is God going to create a new heaven and a new earth. That's the ultimate plan. Mm. Okay. He eliminate wicked people, man. Hmm. If you if you see what we just read, um, how these people were wicked. They were murderers, thieves. They hmm. were just idol worshippers, Satan worshippers. They were wicked people. You know? And to me, this is a purging of the earth. Which has to happen. You know, and then going into that millennial period, you got to remember, there'll be a thousand years of peace. Hmm. And the Feast of the Tabernacle will still exist where every nation will come to Jerusalem and bow before the throne of Jesus Christ, which is the throne of David. So that couldn't actually be effective and be a thousand years of peace if you didn't rid the earth of so many wicked people. And you got to remember, the devil, the antichrist, the beast, all of them going to be chained up in hell. Hmm. So not only is he eliminating the wicked people, he getting rid of the wicked ones who cause people to be wicked. Hmm. Not saying, and this is, we'll get more into this as we keep digging, but not to say that there won't be people in the earth that still be wicked during the millennial period. But the scripture clearly said that those people will starve if they don't come to the Feast of the Tabernacles and worship the king. They'll starve. It said there'll be no rain on their territory. There'll be no rain in their land. And you know where there's no rain, then there's no cattle, there's no food, there's no crops, there's nothing surviving. Okay, and we'll get into this a little bit later, that even though it's a millennial period, a thousand years of peace, there will still be people that refuse to bow to God. Hmm. That refuse to come to Jerusalem and bow before Jesus on the throne of David. But they'll suffer. Any other questions? Well, he asks why, I guess in reference to your response to his initial question. But I'm not sure. What's the question again? Read from I can't see it. Why does all of these things happen before God send people to hell? Because and God, because God is really trying to give people an opportunity to get saved, man. Which we found later, as we read in the scripture, they still didn't repent. Yeah. You know. He's trying to do everything he can to prevent sending people to hell. Mm. Very important. He's trying to do everything he can. So even during the tribulation period, he's still trying to get people saved. Wow. He's going out of his way to get people saved. Mm. And this is why he's doing this. You know, but then if people keep being wicked, then they're going to fall right in the line of the wrath of God. Mm. But that's why he's trying to get people saved. Mm. That's why. And thank God for that. Yes. But then you got people that refuse to get saved. Mm. And these are the people that getting took out. He's weeding the wicked out. Along with having a spirit then, then of strong delusions so they won't even want to get saved. Absolutely. Hmm. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Well, we love you guys. Thank you for your question. Look, if you still got questions, send your question in. When we come back to class, we'll address your question first before we even get into um, the teaching because we do want to address your questions. That's why we do this for people to learn. And we all learn from it. We all want to learn, okay? So we love you guys. We thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget the conference. Amen. And don't forget to love your neighbors as you love yourself. Yes. And don't forget to support your local church. Right now is the time to plant your feet in somebody's church. Okay? Mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily have to be new wine. We're not hung up on that. We just want you to get your feet planted in a Bible-believing, full gospel church. Okay? Please do that and give your life to Jesus Christ. It would be the best decision you ever made. I'm Apostle Donald Graham. Prophetess Anita Graham. Thank you guys for tuning in. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.